Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 53, How Not to Design a Bikini. In this episode, we talk about Einstein in Africa, Hex Coffee at Wolves in Johannesburg while lockpicking, and How Not to Design a Bikini. Thank you for watching and listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 53. Uh, for our random this week, uh, it happens to be the racing number of Herbie, uh, which they did do a remake, which was very bad, uh, but it Aren't didn't live up to the original. Yeah, oh, the other, well, in the old days, they were bad, but all the movies were bad at that stage. I, I, no, but I mean, aren't all the remakes bad? Yes. <laughs> yes. Not. Cool. I'm such a cynical bastard. Anyway, anyway. Uh, let's get into uh, introducing our guests this week. We have uh, Carolina... O Oderman Governor, is that correct? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Uh, Skyping in from Cape Town. Um, Hi. You can get to her at Caroline Loon on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. Website www.caroline.org. Uh, do you want to mention any other websites or locations? Uh, no, that should be enough. For now, okay. That's got everything. Cool. And then also we have Dominic White with us again. Uh, Twitter at Singe. And the website is The Product. I That's don't. Cool. And that's a pretty cool Twitter name as well. Like, congratulations on that <laughs> yeah, one. Getting singed, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yes. You must have been right there in the beginning. Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and short. Um, and, of course, you can always join us in our, our ROC uh, off the website. There's a little nice pop-out. Um, and we'll get into our events happening. We have the 1st of July is the close of submissions for the Google Developers Challenge for Africa. Oh, for like 30 hours in a day. Yeah, no, I've, I wanted to do something. I have a friend who is actually doing this very cool smarty 3D graphics thing. Okay, Neat. cool. Um, so, and it's actually coming along quite nicely. Um, and then also, of course, it's Jorgen's birthday. Uh, he's in the IRC at the moment, I can see. First of July. First, yeah, tonight. And he's on, no, not first of Jorgen's birthday tonight. Okay. Uh, he's pr been, he's joined us in IRC about every single show for the past month. Thank you. Happy birthday, Jorgen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday indeed. Uh, then also 15th to 17th of July in Johannesburg, it's Icon. Something to do. Uh, we're going to be recording there on the Saturday. All right, into the topics. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the N9 uh, Nokia, which is running Mebo, which just, I must say, Migo. actually looks Mego. Yes, yes. Which looks very cool. Mm. Uh, before we forget, we, with us we have Jan Vermeulen, <laughs> Stuart <laughs> Allen, Karen Vermeulen, and uh -huh. Johan Els mixing and myself, Tim Hawk. Uh, sorry, we're running a bit late, and I've introduced... New studio and all the rest, things are breaking yeah. badly. Yeah, and yeah. plus the biggest show ever, ever. Th that I can remember. No, it is the biggest show ever. All right, cool. We've never had one, what's it, one, two, three, four, five, seven. Seven. Nice. I think the highest we've done is five. I don't cool. count, I don't have a mic. <laughs> well, you have a headset on. <laughs> cool. It's a voice from you? beyond. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, as we're going to the topics, uh, cool. Nokia started talking about Migo, and they've released their phone, which I must say looks beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, there was a bit of a surprise around it, um, but it shouldn't have been. Nokia did announce the phone pretty early. Then they announced the Windows Phone partnership, and people tend, you know, just forgot about the fact that they had announced the Amigo phone. Um, and what's interesting about it is it does away with any buttons on the front face of the phone completely. No home button. And it's kind of, if you look at the Nokia N8, um, it's sort of like the, that was the design in the beginning. Um, the, the home button seems kind of like an afterthought on the N8. That, that and the, and the, uh, what's the what's uh, slide out one? Like the C7 or, C7, or something yeah. like that. I mean, also the Playbook doesn't have a button on the Playbook front either. Have hey. a single button on it. No. Yeah. So it is, it, apparently they've also got the slide thing. You, we slide across the edge to go back to Yeah, home. yeah. They've got the thing where they can de de your edge detect. They can detect whether you come from the bezel or not. Um, mm. So I'm, I'm not, I don't think Nokia does that. But it's, it's, a, it's a neat design philosophy. I'm, we'll see how it goes. If you look at it, it's actually quite a pretty phone. Uh, if you look at the interface, the way it works. Um, Carl's ice camera on the back again. It's, it's, Those are always good. Obviously. It's the first phone in a long time from Nokia that I'd love to look and get my hands on and play with. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't had a chance to play with Mego, though I know some netbook guys that have. Yeah. Apparently, it's not fantastic. So I'd like to see what it's like on a phone. Cool. Um, Mego is BSD, basically. Uh, not BSD. Uh, what am I talking about? It's... Um, Linux. Yeah, but it's <laughs> De uh, Debian. Is it Debian? Debian. Yeah. Okay. Debian. Sorry. Mm. Uh, so you can pretty much do like an apt get on 
they install well, it. So you can always use a lot of Ubuntu repositories, maybe yeah. a bit of recompiling? No, you can't. You, It'd you probably know. be a recompile for ARM, I guess. Yeah, it is all ARM, but yeah. you, there are a you lot of tools available. I mean, I know like you your BitTorrent clients and all your flipping everything is has been compiled Ooh, for. Ooh, BitTorrent from your phone. You can. <laughs> Watch your battery go <laughs> flat very quickly. All right, uh, from there we're going to start Carolina, uh, part of the reasons why you're here. Um, the AIMS Next Einstein Initiative, do you want to tell us about it? Mm, yeah, sure. So uh, since 2003, there's an AIMS Center in, in, here in South Africa, cool. the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences, that's what AIMS stands for. It's in uh, Musenberg, uh, next to Cape Town, and it's a one-year postgraduate degree in the mathematical sciences, so broadly. Um, for African graduates from around the world, there's really cool lectures coming from all around the world. Uh, there's tutors, there's a, it's a live-in program, fully cool. funded scholarships for the students, and so on and so on. Now, this program has been really successful um, and hailed as a good example and so on around the world. So in, in 2008, um, the founder of Ames, uh, Neil Turok, who's a famous cosmologist, cool. uh, got the TED Prize for it. Oh, very cool. And so that was, yeah, so that was really cool news. Um, and with the TED Prize comes a TED wish. Uh, and the way he formulated his, he formulated his wish was that uh, within our lifetimes, we celebrate an African Einstein. And so the way to find that African Einstein is obviously to create opportunities for as many uh, African scientists as possible. And so the way to implement that is to build 50 new AIM centers across Africa, and that's the AIM's Next Einstein Initiative. Oh, very, very cool. Uh, I'll mention also, mm -hmm. are, you, are you guys also involved with uh, Meerkat and all the research? Sorry, I know cosmology, and I know you come from that background with uh, SKA as well. Yes, absolutely. So uh, at Ames here, there's a research center with four research groups, and there's one cosmology group uh, in which I'm involved. Um, and that cosmology group is very active. It's very exciting what, what's happening there. Obviously, close collaboration with uh, SKA, um, lots of Meerkat projects as well that we're uh, involved in uh, one way or another so that's very cool and in January next year we're going to host the first Cape Town International Cosmology School that will be uh, in STS in January. Oh very very cool. Um, are you going to kick it off a bit mm -hmm. with I know there's the big uh, it's in November International Astronomy, Astronomy Union meeting. Cool are you guys <laughs> going to be, uh, be involved with that as well? Um, the IU meeting in November. Um, the IU similar. has lots of meetings. They have yeah, a they've got. All the, there's a big conference meeting. coming up. Um, sorry, we just gone blank on the name. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll ask her oh, extended. Maybe we'll, 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 we'll get it from RSC. We'll come back to it. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, so the first really exciting conference coming up is the big SKA forum that's in Banff in Canada. The first few days of July. Um, uh, I'm lucky. I'm going to go there. It's going to be really exciting. Um, that's an important meeting. First, there's a science meeting that will be very interesting because it's going to be discussing science with big data, so massive data. And data yeah. sciences are obviously um, really cool and, and very important. Um, it's also the last one of these forums before the decision of where the SK is going to be built. So we're all holding thumbs here and yes, uh, hoping know. for South Africa. But it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be an interesting event. Um, um, I've just found out it's it the, sorry to interrupt you, it's the IAC yeah. uh, conference. Oh, in October, yeah, okay, yes. the International Astronautical Congress. So that's the whole of, uh, the whole space industry, everybody coming together uh, for a crazy week in Cape Town. So what's interesting about that is that, is the people coming together. Unlike, uh, say, astronomy events that attract mostly mm -hmm. astronomers, uh, there's lots of different stakes in space. There's the telecommunications stakes, there's uh, the defense people, um, there's lots of diplomats and governments things because, you know, there's actually, there's a United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs. Uh, it sounds like a diplomatic mission to the aliens, but uh, it's actually an office that exists that tries to regulate the use of outer space and make sure that nobody puts weapons up there and things like that. So those people will be there as well. And obviously all the space, uh, the space technologists and the astronomers and so on. So, yeah, that's going to be really exciting. Yes, I know there's a couple of people looking forward to that. Um, and how is your mm -hmm. project through Africa to build the different AIMS uh, centers going? 
It's going great. Uh, we're opening the first um, the first uh, other independent AIM center from AIM South Africa in Senegal in September. Cool. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting place. It's going to be bilingual, French and English. So that'll be cool. Okay. Um, the following year, we're opening in Ghana. Then hopefully we're opening also in Ethiopia, and then we'll see. So, so this is very, very exciting. We're supported. We've got big support. The TED Prize is, is it really opens doors. So following this, we've got support from Google. We got support from the Canadian government. Um, we got support from local governments. So in South Africa is also supported by the South African government, which is cool. great. Cool. Um, Senegal similarly and in Ghana as well. Cool. Um, and it's mainly training and stuff that you're doing at these places or, or, uh, or is anything else that you guys are busy with the AIMS institutes? Um, well, we're trying, we're, we're seeing this as a, it's going to be a network of centers. So it's sort of a pan-African university concept. Cool. Um, which, is, which is interesting because obviously there's a number of, of uh, things that we'll have to share. Um, and we want to share a number of services. So we really have an interesting um, IT infrastructure to build yeah. um, and try to develop. So that's going to be cool. But that sort of leads on to that job yes. opening we have. Cool. Um, do you, do you want to um, go into that quickly? Uh, which is part of the reasons I yeah. know why you're on tonight and we rushed it a bit. <laughs> as opposed to, you yeah. know. Thanks, guys, for the opportunity. Cool. No so worries. I'm looking for a web apps developer. Mm. Um, the idea is that... Um, the, the coordination of the AIMS Next Time initiative is based here in Cape Town, mm -hmm. and we're providing services to all the centers. So first we need a new website, but embedded in this website we need um, student application services, um, course proposals, um, tutor applications, and, and all sorts of of really important services. Now, this is very exciting in itself. I, I would love to do it myself, but... <laughs> yes, Tom, yeah, I can um, imagine. Yeah. I think I need somebody with a bit more experience uh, specifically in this. But um, so there, there's that part, which is um, developing a whole IT infrastructure for, mm -hmm. for the network, including yeah. those services. But we, we can do that. We're doing that in, uh, in collaboration with the Perimeter Institute in Waterloo, Canada. Cool. So uh, the Perimeter Institute is, um, is a cosmology or theoretical physics uh, research institute that was set up by RIM, a research in motion, the, yeah, the, the yeah. company behind the Blackberry. Blackberry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was set up by them in Waterloo in Canada, and that's now headed by Neil Turok, the founder of Ames. And these guys have a fantastic organization, and they have fantastic um, IT developers. And they're also, um, they're, they're also going to develop a number of things. They have developed a number of things in-house that we can use and we can, uh, help, uh, they can help us develop these things. So this is also an opportunity to work with them and to learn from them, to go to Perimeter and, uh, and, and collaborate with these guys. And that's going to be very exciting. The platform we're looking at um, is uh, Drupal. Cool. Um, and and we're hoping to develop these services as plugins for Drupal um, instead of having it some, only as an in-house thing to be able to release them further as well to the community. So the whole open source uh, concepts and everything like that, and release back yeah. to the community, yeah. which is mm. always a good concept to have. Yeah. 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 And from at the same time, uh, sorry. Yeah. No, do um, you want to go? Uh, <laughs> 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 we should have a flag. Okay, wait. Yeah. Um, 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 just the, the most exciting part hasn't hasn't I haven't told the most exciting part yet. Okay, cool. then do that. Then I'll ask my question. Right. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Um, so, uh, as part of that, as part of that development, I also want to develop um, uh, research tools um, for, for to deploy for the AIMS network and and hopefully to the community afterwards. So that means, um, so let's take an example. Most, uh, most research institutes around the world today, um, say in, in, or in, in, in the West, um, institutions yeah. that have a lot of money, you'll have a scientist, a researcher who, has, who owns an ideal license or a mathematical license and things like that, and uses it about 5% of the time on his own powerful machine um, and runs it like that. Now, this is obviously very inefficient and costs a lot of money. And if you're thinking in terms of um, the African continent um, and the research that is not happening around yeah. here, well, this is the sort of thing where we can improve, where we can create services that will um, help people just access research tools. So imagine having a, a, um, a, a license for, for one of these scientific softwares. And then 
developing a really cool interface where you can, with um, low bandwidth, uh, just sending you know, commands or sending programs and, set, and then run either simulations or programs and things on that, on that software elsewhere. Um, so that software is permanently, is accessible to a lot of people. Possibly we could also develop interfaces where, imagine this, you have a cell phone and you can just run a simulation of the universe from your cell phone. How very, cool would that very be? Very cool. So basically, so, it's, yeah. it's almost like what you do with the telescopes where you, you book your time on, on that instrument and you, you would then send through your commands and get your reports back. And then at the end of your time, the next person gets to use it. So you're maximizing your resources. Mm. Yeah, so that's uh, sort of like the old style batch processing. Um, cool. You know, if you think of the old uh, yes. mainframes like old many, many years yeah. ago. Mm. Um, call that so we can probably improve on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this, this person would also help uh, with their knowledge of technologies, help us come, come up with really innovative systems to enable research to be, to be carried out. And I think if we're creative and we, if we come up with really cool new research tools, um, we're, we won't just set, be setting examples for research in Africa, but I think a lot of people outside would be very interested in adopting those as well. So, yeah, exciting. It sounds like a very, very cool job offer. Yeah, very um, interesting. How, how many people are you, are you looking for? Or, um, and is uh, Cape Town based? Person. Sorry, I it's missed it. Cape Town based. Mm? I'm looking for one person uh, to be based in Musenberg, so just next door to Cape Town. Um, and yeah, to work here um, all the time, so a full-time job, but with a little bit of traveling, so t for example, to the Perimeter Institute in Canada, mm, yeah. and obviously, you know, looking at, you know, if you need to, uh, if you need to get some training in one technology or something where you want to implement something and so on, that's obviously, you know, part of, of what we're looking at, so, yeah. Cool. Right, Jan, your question. <laughs> yeah, it was actually to do with Drupal. Um, is there any particular reason for, for the choice of Drupal out of interest? Uh, so one of them is the easiest is because we're piggybacking on the development uh, capacity of the Perimeter Institute. Uh, but they did a careful survey of various content management systems and they decided on Drupal um, based on their uh, criteria which match ours very well. So. For that decision, I trust them, and it's a huge advantage to just be able to use them to help our development. Mm. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Stuart, any questions from your side? No, no, I haven't got anything at the moment. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, no <laughs> worries. No, it like sounds that. like a, a very, I'm very just cool, cool. Here. <laughs> sorry. Uh, it sounds like an awesome project that you guys are building yeah, there. Very and it's there is one question in the IRC. Yes. Cool. In IRC. So read, so read it. But I don't want to. Okay, <laughs> wait. I'll, I'll ask it. Okay. Um, uh, the question was, how are they pushing the development of... Are you basically also looking at getting more female scientists in? Um, I think that was the guess of the question. Uh, I love that question. The answer is yes, we are. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, uh, uh, I uh, and what methods are you using? So uh, in our student body, we, are, we have a policy of having a third of, of women students. Mm -hmm. um, so every year there's a third of, of the students at least who are, who are women. So cool. at, at the moment it's, uh, it's, it's stuck at a third because, because we get less than a third um, applications from women. Um, but we still take in a third of women, and, and that makes complete sense um, be, because of various reasons. Um, but also... Uh, yeah, also we're very, very gender aware. If we get more applications, then we'll just increase the percentage. But this is our minimum that we do enforce. And in terms of uh, staff in the next batch and initiative secretariat, uh, we're also very balanced, um, and we really want to keep that balance because, yeah, it makes for a cool working cool. environment. Yeah, very, very cool. Uh, sorry, I see there was another question here. Um, sorry, I'm just sorry, read. <laughs> it is. Okay, no, just somebody just said, uh, if you manage to get it, it's just they, they can understand it's, it's quite difficult uh, because there is quite a shortage currently. So uh, they were just wondering, mm. uh, but it sounds like you are being successful in it. And, but uh, I think the, from, from what I read there, is there, is there anything that IT industry can learn maybe from your success 
in recruiting in recruiting females. IT and engineering in general, we also have a shortage of, of female engineering um, students and engineers graduating. Dude, when I was in varsity, there was one girl in our class. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds right. <laughs> Cool. It's, uh, it's a very good, uh, yeah, it's a good question. So um, the argument that some people bring forward to us is if you're enforcing a third of women uh, students, then you are essentially um, bringing in uh, weaker applicants in the female student body than in the male student body, and how do you manage that? Um, so that's a, it's a criticism that that uh, that people tend to have uh, because you know obviously numerically that would make sense. But what we find is that the reason why uh, girls usually um, or sometimes in, basically if you take if you take the top ten percent of each, it's, it's the same ratio, right? It's yeah, the top ten yeah. percent of guys will be as good as the top ten percent of girls. It's just in terms of numbers, they don't match. So, so we do bring in more. But what we find is that even though their um, the grades when they come to study at Ames may may be lower, they there are reasons for that. And while at Ames, they flourish completely. Um, and the reasons for that are that. Usually, uh, they have to do other things. They have, say, domestic duties, yeah. or they have to work, or usually they take care of the home. So they do a lot more work outside that stops them from studying as much, basically. Cool. And when they come, uh, on, when, they go, when they leave Ames, they're completely at par with their male colleagues. And um, so that's, it's a very obvious and very easy investment for us. Mm. We, we choose to take more girls, and, and the outcome is just brilliant. So what I would maybe suggest if the industry is struggling is to maybe invest a little bit more into their female staff um, and, and because they would get much more out of them. And that's, what we, that's what we get yeah. anyway. Sounds good. And I think the study, especially among the Western schools, is actually finding that females tend to actually do better at varsity than most males do. Um, much for that. Just no, uh, just uh, <laughs> scores-wise. So the, the ones that do actually manage to get in tend to do better. So it, it does show you yeah, that. Um, Once you're in a good environment, yeah. um, you you flourish basically. Yeah. Yeah. So the environment is equally important. Mm -hmm. So it has mm -hmm. to. You have to put them. Um, I mean, it, it, it's well, cool. It's cool to. To discriminate, I guess, in this sense, is, is the word. Uh, I mean, there's no real beating about the bush. Oh, you okay. are you are um, favouring women with lower marks. Uh, in some instances, over guys with perhaps high marks, but once you put them in that good environment, they flourish. Yeah, yeah. it also yeah, might be exactly. a case. But it's also it's also a gain for the guys because by doing that, we uh, instead of instead of just choosing the top individuals and working in and thinking in, 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 on the basis of individuals, yeah. what yeah. we do is we create a a student body that has all the elements of a community that's going to grow and bring the best out of everyone. Yeah. So we insist on diversity in countries of origin, we insist on diversity in uh, or original training, so we, every year we have some, some mathematicians, some physicists, that, some yeah, that's people with computer science specializations and things like that, and obviously diversity in religion, in gender, in languages and all that. So it's, it's, it's the composition of the whole student body that makes it grow. So, so you can't really say it's favoring. We just, this, is, this is what we do. We, we choose to, to create that student body. And yeah, it works. Cool. Herod, you had a question? Uh, yeah, I'm just drawing a weird parallel here between uh, the kinds of things that you do in evolutionary computation. Yes. And yeah, I was also you, know, thinking you, that. you don't always want to favor the top individuals in a population because that might bias your final result. And it shows normally that exactly. you know, it might be that you don't find out a better or a good global, um, mm -hmm. not, not average, a good yeah. global fitness. Yeah, so yeah. in this case, you yeah, take... Exactly. <laughs> yeah, All right. Uh, cool. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, Car Carolina? Um, about oh. what you do at Ames? Um, no, I think that covers it. Um, oh, actually, yes. yes. Tomorrow mm -hmm. is the big graduation for this year's uh, AIM students. So you'll cool. notice it's it's sort of out of sync with the South African academic yeah. year because it matches the, the, the Northern Hemisphere academic mm. year. Um, it was a choice that was made at the beginning, and it seems to work, although there are some amendments done this year. We're going to have an, a second second group of people coming in in, in January. Cool. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so big graduation tomorrow, 55 new people. People are getting their degrees, um, so that's going to be a nice event. 
Oh, awesome. awesome. Cool. Very cool. All right. Uh, we'll move on. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the next topic, which I know Jan wanted to cover, and this is basically Ecasa released the four options for local loop unbundling. Well, we knew these four options were coming. They, yeah. they, they released this discussion document, um, finally, um, which had for some reason been delayed last week. Um, yeah. It's not due to telecom asking very nicely. I, 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 yeah, I, don't, I don't necessarily want to draw conclusions, but um, uh, I, I wasn't there personally. Rudolph was there covering yeah, the yeah. event. Um, but I mean, obviously, I heard from him firsthand what happened. We've got the sound recording. And I saw his articles. And um, local loop unbundling is something that we've been begging for for yes, how long? Yes, so much. I, I want to be able Five to get, years. yeah. Yes. A, I want to get somebody else in telecom. Yes. And B, I want to be able to get my clean ADSL. Yeah, naked yeah. ADSL, exactly. And yeah, and so it, it's a bit of a it was it was a bit of a disappointment, but not unexpected to to see what happened today. What are the four options? Um, okay, so you've got bitstream access. Yeah. You've got line sharing, you've got full unbundling, and I don't know what the fourth option the is. The fourth really. one is where they do the is that the it's similar to line sharing, but it's that the splitting of frequencies. Okay, so I, to me that's line sharing. So um, it's I don't quite. I know number two and four were very similar. Oh, hang on, I, I get what yes, because what you've got is you've got two forms of line sharing. You've got one form of line sharing where everybody can can offer voice telephony and data services yeah. over the line. And you've got the other form of line sharing where they can only offer data services and uh, Telcom uh, maintains a monopoly over the voice. Yeah. Um, and in that sense, it's because they work at different frequencies. Telcom will do yes. voice low frequencies. They'll unbuddle the higher frequencies. And then of they'll the filter cable. out. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, so it, this is a bit... Now, now, to give some background, what, what ICASA has succeeded in doing is put down what they call facilities leasing guidelines. Yeah. And this is what Neotel was trying to use, I think, earlier this year to, to gain access to, to the force, local loop. Yeah. Goodness knows why. Um, uh, I haven't really had any feedback about what they want to offer, but they were talking about getting access to some exchanges in highly populous areas in well, Johannesburg. I think the problems are the, the currently Wi-Fi phones they released have all tanked. Pretty much everyone's returned them. Quick, quick question. This new one. Quick question. Can I play a little bit of devil's advocate? Yeah. Do we really want local loop unbundling on the copper now? Because it's pushing fiber. Yeah, and, and this, is, this is a valid question, and this is a question people are, are bringing up. But is, is uh, copper still valid? But, but the, the, the argument, the counter argument to, to that being made is if we bring in competition, then people will yes. be encouraged to upgrade the infrastructure. Because right now there's no incentive to upgrade the infrastructure, well, and nobody's so, rolling out fiber. Well, well, Telecom's not going to roll off fiber. No, they're not, but there but are if, other companies that are looking at Telcom knows that. that, well, I'm going to have to share this copper. Now, the only way... I can compete and make sure that I'm better than them. If I roll fiber that I don't have to share. No, fair and, enough. And, and then everyone's going to roll fiber out because they have to compete. Yes. Against However, no, fair enough. Now, but looking at the local loop unbundling, I just wanted to write on that topic. Looking at the local loop unbundling discussion document, what they're talking about is unbundling all of the local loop, wireless included. So if you roll out wireless infrastructure, you're going to, because what the guidelines say is you have to lease that local loop. Um, for a reasonable price, not higher than retail, to your competition. Um, and it doesn't matter what form that local loop takes. And I think because Telcom was arguing this point, which is also to a degree a valid point, but the only reason this is a valid point is because it was stalled so damn long. Yeah. Um, the, the fact that um, why, why is the copper local loop considered a, uh, an essential facility now? We have the wireless local loop yeah, in, in, the, in the form of the 3G networks, in form of Wi-Fi. It's the only decent way to do uncapped bandwidth. Yeah. Um, so, and from that perspective, we can try to argue it. But the fact is there are alternatives. It is not, they, don't, they no longer have a monopoly on the local loop. On a local loop, people have, they have the monopoly on a wireline local loop. And so why is that more essential than Vodacom, Celsi, ATA, uh, and MTN's Be local loop access. Because Telcom has had a monopoly on it. Yes. And yes. they could have at any time, which they have now done, gone, gone and gotten a sole license. So th there's been competition in all the others. Um, and Telcom has been free to compete in all the others. Yes. And there's one thing, they've had protection. And that's why this is essential. No one else has been allowed to compete with yeah. them. Well, they have. Ever since the, I, the, the, uh, the I don't know if it's the ICNS, but the, the new licensing structure at yeah. ICASA was introduced, which Altec fought for, yes, if people I remember. remember. Um, uh, ever since that was introduced, people could roll out their own networks, but they haven't. 
Because it is costly. They, they've started. Uh, you see a couple, there's a lot no of fiber. Loop. I mean, local yeah. loop. Nobody's rolled out local loop, and there's probably a good reason for it. Um, th they claim costs, and I claim, give me fiber to my house. Um, so yeah. it's... Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I know it's not going to happen twice. Um, Dominique was saying that copper is still going to be valid. I'm not saying it's not valid, but I'm just saying it's a maybe a bit of a, an incentive for the competition to... Because they can't access the copper. Um, to, uh, oh, other, other one of the things with this topic is I is know, it not going to just stagnate? As yeah. soon as they get access to the copper, it's going to be they're all going to roll out ADSL services, and that's where the, that's where it's going to stop. Well, hopefully not. Uh, look, and I was listening to another podcast, and they actually said is local loop and banding very rarely drops the price. Um, that, but I, I've heard people in the UK say exactly the opposite. They say that the, that the local loop and bunding was essential yeah. to the decrease in wireline pricing there. So I think it's different per market. Probably. Um, well, I'm so hoping, and I think the person is, we've got Samantha Perry on next week. And as far as I know, I think this is what she's studying as her... Uh, as part of her master's yes. dissertation. So it's going to be very interesting to chat to her and find out what the, what the findings and stuff are. Yeah. I think it was her. Hope, I hope mm. so. Um, but we'll, we'll chat a bit more about her with that. Did you want to add anything? Yeah, so I'm not an expert in this stuff, but my suspicion is that it might not drop the... Um, the cost immediately, but it'll drop the entrance cost for a competitor to yeah. come in because they're not going to have to now build their whole oh, network. network. Mm. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's up. incredibly expensive. I yeah. mean. And I mean, they're talking about fiber. Actually, if you put fiber to the home, it almost never pays for itself. Uh, it's, yeah, you know, it costs you 20,000 rand to lay a cable out to that guy's house. It's going to take it, years it, it and years and years the, before you'll ever pay that. There's off. a lot of studies which show that it does help the economy, though. No, no, I'm not. Uh, yeah. no, no, Sorry, I'm not I'm going there. I'm yes. just saying, as the, the company that's not going to dig yeah. the holes, yes. dig the but, trench. And that's what the government exactly. subsidies are for. Yeah. yeah, okay, government subsidies, but the business has to think about the business. As good as it might be for the overall economy, it's not good for the business. For necessarily yeah. business. Um, on on, yeah. on the topic of introducing competition, I, I, I'm willing to put my head on a block and say that the ISP space in South Africa is one of the most competitive markets out there. It, it, it is cutthroat, in fact. If yes. you look at what, and if you look at what Afrios has done, in, in what the M places has where they competition, yes, and, and that happens obviously at the IP Connect level. Yeah. So you get your IP Connect, and and you can develop your products around that. And if you look at what Open Web does with with just, and that, I don't even think they handle their own IPC. Open Web just resells IPC from other people like Internet Solutions and Web Africa and CyberSmart maybe. Um, and, and the innovation that happens just on a product level, it's not a technical level innovation, it's a product level innovation. And that's what happens in our ISP space by, by simply allowing competition in a very limited manner. Now allow competition on the low level I and agree. I think we'll see magic happen. Because if you actually look, mm. as we um, now know what goes in the whole thing in providing an ADSL line and it's, it's scary what you're... Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're being uh, one told last, to move one, along. Yeah, one last thing to add there is just cool. one counterpoint for people to think about is that we have had a columnist write and say um, that the local loop unbundling um, might actually increase costs. People don't know what it costs to run and maintain the local loop. It is much more expensive than people think. However, I maintain that people like Afrihost manage to sell, sell bandwidth below cost and still turn a profit. <laughs> I mean, as, con as a contradiction in terms, yeah. that sounds, that is the kind of innovation we've seen in ISP space in this country. But is this ever going to actually happen? This is just guidelines that have been released. And Is and it ever going to actually come to it that they're going to either force telecom or telecom's going to be you know, forced via competition or forced via law to actually do and, this? And we'll see, because what ICASA has not done, and we've nailed them for this in an article today, I'm sorry, and I know we're trying to move on, but this is an important thing, um, is that they've not all of a sudden said, yeah, the November 2011 deadline, we'll meet that, we'll have regulations out by then. We're like, no, you did not, you did not say you'd have regulations out by then, you'd say local loop undoing would be done by then. That's, I mean, like, yes. now suddenly saying, oh, major success, you know, local yeah. that's not good enough. Um, so, so, but I mean, at least this is, we're seeing st progress, albeit slow. Um, even if the November 2011 deadline was completely overambitious, um, hopefully, hopefully, you know, like something's happening. Yeah, 2015, who knows, <laughs> you know, but uh, something is happening at least. <laughs> cool. All right. Okay. Uh, but we will talk a bit about it next week as well. Um, okay. Dominic White, <laughs> uh, now, now we're going to talk about whole bunch of topics from you. Let's start with the OX coffee. Um, I know you guys are starting a monthly 
for, for people that are in the hacking community and stuff like that. Um, you're running it, I know it's at the Wolves. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about it? Okay, well, um, so just to correct the one thing you said, it's not necessarily for people who are in the community currently. Uh, the okay. idea is to try and get people into the community, and it's an extension from ZACon where we want to lower the bar, stop making an elitist thing, encourage people to join, and hopefully end up with some good research being produced in South Africa. So it's a monthly meetup. Right now it's at Wolves. Um, we like it because it's uh, just off the highway and has uh, free Wi-Fi. Um, <laughs> free not wifi so much because of the hipsters. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, yeah, so right now yeah. we've got a good gathering. We've got about, I don't know, let's say about 10 to 20 people who show up pretty regularly. Cool. Side projects are starting to develop, so there's like a general interest in lock picking which is there every yeah, week no, I was going to ask because I saw on the mailing list the guys are quite keen on the, the lock picking stuff it's yeah the one guy Eric came and he brought his fancy lock picks that's um, pretty cool. from I think Germany so now we've, everyone's been bringing different locks and, and going at it I'm still terrible at that stuff but yeah I've, I tried my hand at it at, at DEF CON they had a guy doing demonstrations and stuff and he, um, have you been to DEF CON? I'm a bit ham fisted yeah oh, twice nice. yeah. cool um, yeah, so there's the whole lockpicking village at DEFCON. Yes, um, yeah, 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 it was there. But yeah, so um, we want to get. Did you guys manage to find any local uh, location to get lockpicks? I know that was the thing on the main list. Not that I know of. No. So to be honest, I'd like a lawyer to just tell me the law on this stuff. I yeah. mean, we we brought a whole bunch of. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Caroline was yeah. really into lockpicking. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, Sorry, no, so, I mean, if we bring lockpicks back from America, is that breaking the law? We don't know. Like, I've spoken to an actual lockpick who told me, no, it's like owning a gun. You have to have a license. So I said, where's your license? He's like, I don't have a license. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what the, the, the law the is on that okay. stuff. Yeah, because the guy's got pretty sophisticated. I mean, some of those, it's not just a piece of paper clip and a, you know, and a steady hand. It's these guys have got all sorts of fancy tools. Uh, and and they've, they've the websites cool. with all the different locks that you can yeah, get, uh, where the locks came. You see, it seems like the history of the lock. This is like based on this lock and this lock and this lock that they combined and took this but piece. once again, it's not for breaking into houses. It's to understand the technology mm. and how the things work and, yeah, the yeah. history behind this mechanism in the lock and, and the countermeasures that the <laughs> lock makers put in and... Hi, hi, hi. Twitch the camera. Twitch the camera. Two awesome boomers. I think it makes us eight now. Hi, Kevin. How's it going? <laughs> oh, he can't hear because of the headphones. Yeah. Says hi. <laughs> <laughs> he's come, He's just come back from uh, Johannesburg. He went to see Michelle Obama this morning. Oh, oh cool. Cool. very cool. Wow, that's quite a yeah. quick turnaround. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, she apparently locked up our highways twice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyway, yeah. uh, what are the, is it quite a diverse crowd? Um, or is it really just purely as I said, lock picking and IP, and IT security? Or is it a pretty well, diverse crowd, hardware guys, what? Yeah, so in terms of demographics, it's a bunch of uh, middle class white people for the most part. And you know? guys, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, we'd like it to be more representative of South Africa in general. Um, and we'd particularly like to get more women there. But uh, <laughs> not to find dates. What, what, kind of, what kind of geek gallery wouldn't? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty diverse. So we've got guys, like we've got some greybeards who've been in the industry for years and are just uberlete at what they do. And we try and get them to come more often. There's people who are interested in hardware. People are interested more on the dev side. Um, okay. There's people doing Wi-Fi stuff, people doing lock picking stuff. So yeah, different people. We encourage people to play with different things and then just come and show people the results. Mm. So it's not presenting. So the ZEDECON conference is submit a response to the CFP, come present and prepare and all that stuff. At OX Coffee, it's just come show people the cool stuff you're working on and then find other people to work on it with, pick up projects, that kind of stuff. No, that's cool. That's very, very cool. cool. So, right. so what is OX Coffee in code to? What like if, if or, decode, or decode to, sorry, uh, in, in, in ASCII, in, uh, in UTF-8, whatever. I don't know. He's going to have to look it up. <laughs> I've, been, I've been Googling it and I can't. I, well, I, so I tried I, it on a calculator. It's a really, really big number. You I'll know what? You. I'm going to stick it into Volframe Alpha. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so where it comes from is so the um, file magic for Java, um, is it classes? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is Cafe Babe. Okay. Um, and I thought it was coffee. So I made that mistake. Um, but yeah, it turns out it's close enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. It's nice for, for coffee meetup. 
Yeah. Coffee's figure, always cool for, for coders. You can always figure out what level the person's at if they use an O instead of a zero. You know, they don't know what hex is. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they always get confused with the OX in the front as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. We'll yeah, but so if yeah. you guys are keen, just generally in the IT industry, you want to start getting into security or just see what's going on or just hack around a bit. Um, no, no, I've been yeah, trying to get there, but I, it's strange enough, every single Saturday, you guys, you, you guys have something on, I have something else on. But well, So we haven't that. chosen the date for July, so you suggest a time now. <laughs> I, 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 you You'll have to consult his calendar. I will have to consult my calendar. <laughs> I think she's in the chat room, actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dear might social planet. <laughs> might, might be a, a slightly silly question. Where does all this happen? So it's at um, Wolves, uh, which is on Call It Drive in Ilovo and Joburg. It's from 9... No, no, it's from 10 to 12, but generally we stay there till about 1 or 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I should be looking at this, shouldn't I? Yeah, no, that's right. Uh, <laughs> and we choose the date and announce it on the mailing list or the IRC channel somewhere close to the time once a month. Uh, and the reason it's at Wolves is because if you're coming from Pretoria, you can just jump off the highway at Call It, uh, mm -hmm. and it's pretty close there. So it's not too bad. Uh, and with the Gau train, hopefully that'll be a breeze. Okay. And Saturday traffic's not that bad. Yeah, it's yeah. Bad. Well, yeah. some of the roadworks have uh, had uh, Pretoriaites, what do you call people in Pretoria? Pretorians cursing yeah. us. Yeah. They're, they're supposed to be done with the highway by the end of this month, so that'll be good. It yeah. was supposed to be done with a lot of things by the end of May. No, no technically it was supposed to be done la end of last month. They promised that it will be done by the end of this month. Uh, do you want to, uh, Zedek, can I see you've done the call for papers? You yeah, so the call for papers is out. Um, so we were running an initiative before the call for papers, something we called Mechanical Turks, where you can get a Greybeard to help you. So if you're new to research, submit a paper, Greybeard will work with you. It'll still be your talk. It'll go through the CFP process, but you can basically have a really experienced smart guy work with you to put your stuff together. And um, then we've released the CFP. We've had a couple of good submissions. We're looking for a few more. And we're hoping to uh, have some the night before. We're still discussing it. And then some on the day. Because the last two, we've just had an incredibly long day. Which, <laughs> yeah. but, like, what's amazing is that we've had about as many people at the end as we had in the beginning. That's which cool. Which speaks, yeah. speaks well of people's interest. But... Yeah, so we're going to try to split it up. So if you're interested, you've got something security-wise or hackish you want to talk about, um, submit submit the, submit the to to us. I've got an idea. I'll speak to you after the show about cool. it, but it won't be for this, for this year's ZDACON. It'll be for probably 2012s. <laughs> All right. uh, I was ambitious. hoping you're having 2012s. <laughs> I just want to mention something quickly from the RC. If you want to follow Kevin Govender, it's at... Uh, I'm trying to find it. At... Ah, uh, lost it now. At Govinder. Um, he's pretty cool, especially if you're into astronomy and stuff like that. Oh, he's the guy that was on the... Yeah. Okay. So, cool. He's actually... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Carolina. <laughs> um, all right. Um, okay. We, I'm the just going to give the time. The website is www.zacon.org.za. Dub, dub, dub. No. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> for those of you new to the internet, put three W's in the front. Uh, yeah. For everyone else, it's zacon.org.za. Cool. I'm just going to move us along. <laughs> I, just lo I just clicked on the link. Sorry. <laughs> And, and there are a lot of websites out there that don't do the lookup right. The, especially South African websites. South African ones yeah. don't do the lookup right. <laughs> yeah, so the, the DNS doesn't resolve without www in front. I wonder uh. if... I wonder if uh, no, it depends how they've set up the DNSs. Fix this. What and they've the done is... Choose a government website? Any government website. No, no. I it is, they haven't... <laughs> well, I know... Challenge accepted. Other websites that weren't doing it for either. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tom's life still hasn't fixed this. Cool. Is there uh, Apache Tom? Apache the tabled all the security stuff. <laughs> the cool. Tomcat thing is just a win. It's yeah. like, I bet you our password is password. Uh, oh, right. DOD.gov.ca. <laughs> I've just been given the time, so we're just going to cut out. We won't talk about LulzSec and all the rest of it. But LulzSec, Lul, uh, they'll hopefully still be around next we week. Yeah, I'm sure they'll be around. We're going to talk about the Lulz. Yeah, then they can do it in two minutes. <laughs> if we can't. Lul -sec Some has guy got arrested. He ran the IRC channel. Yes. The rest they, will they, get they used to uh, run the RSC channel for uh, uh, anonymous as well. Okay, neat. So they know he's related somehow. So and the media him. is going mad. They've really they found the mastermind of Lulzsec. Anyway, <laughs> but no, so just, no. just one thing. So yeah. the Sun article, which outs him, has a picture of his bedroom, and they talk about how he has two monitors, 
and he didn't Dude. play a lot of sport, so he must be elite. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I have two monitors. Yeah. You're elite, bro. Dude, we have three monitors contract. here. <laughs> uh, better start hitting the gym, otherwise they're gonna arrest some of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Some, I'd watch out around here, hey. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, all right, uh, we're going to go over ICANN very quickly because I know uh, it basically ICANN has decided to open up all domains and basically you can buy your own domain. I predict another dot com bubble. I uh, so do I. <laughs> it's quite expensive. It's uh, about one hundred and sixty thousand dollars or something like that. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and you've I'm going to want to resell. <laughs> you've got to commit. You're going to need like a 24-hour support desk. There's a whole bunch of other requirements behind it. Basically, you're going to become a mini ICANN for top-level yeah. domain. Yeah. Um, this is top-level domains. It's top-level. So you yeah. can so get Tim Hawk. Dot .google. Dot .tim Hawk. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want dot .google. That's going to be fun. I think it's and probably the already is, gone. And, and the squatters, <laughs> I, I mean, not no, that you, you can't squat. squat. No. You need to prove that you have rights to that domain. Yes. Uh, before they'll give it to you. Because that's what Okay, so who's going to have rights to dot zero? Another thing is the $160,000. How many squatters? It's one. He's going to squat on one. Dude, I go to a VC. I'm like, I'm going to squat on dot zero. I'll make you $500,000 by the end of the year. You've got to prove that you have the rights to the domain. Dot zero. So you've got to. Who's got rights to dot zero? Okay. No, but prove that you have the rights for it. The guy who was on the internet first. So it's, yeah. not, it's not so much prove that no one else has rights for it. You need to prove that it's your trademark and you're actually doing real business behind that and all the rest of so, it. So Coca-Cola might go... Co- the, the reason I bring it up is because yes. this was in an example on one of the articles I read is Coke.0. Yeah. So then I can own the dot .0 top level. That's lame. Yes. I want the dot .0 top level domain. But mm. what they've also done, which is quite smart, is the reason it's so expensive is they're going to use some of that money for legal uh, challenges. So okay. they've, they've built it into the system that there's going to be a whole bunch of time in court. But I always think that it, this is basically <laughs> it's, 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 it's a way of making money. That's the only reason why yeah, I can see it. Yeah, Don't I, really I, see I, guess, I guess some people are going to complain because I'm pretty sure the porn industry is going to jump on this. Well, they've already got dot triple X, right? No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. No, yeah. they tr- so I, they yeah. release it and it immediately got blocked, blocked everywhere. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, the last topic for the show. Um, basically, some person has fashion person has made a solar powered bikini. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about how you must encourage women in IT. And all <laughs> we give them solar powered bikinis. Well, it's to keep their phones going. <laughs> apparently, it's you can plug your phone in to charge your phone. Well, I must say, I want to know: Will this work in the sea? Can you swim in yeah, it? Exactly. <laughs> 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 um, I just the practicality of this is somebody's just done this. No, I did. I t- had to a, sell bikinis. It's I had probably a look one of those the things f- they put on fashion TV. You know, yeah. I had a look at the wear. photos. There's Everyone no way that's tested. waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to test it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a look at the photos, it's like some go- some guy sold it a whole bunch of solar cells together and in a shape of a bikini. I don't think it's really going to be. How much proof. power are you really going to get from that? You need like solar powered baggies to really get it going. But another <laughs> problem is, is you're only exposing. You know, you're only going to expose half of it at the time as well. <laughs> Unless you're walking. Yeah. But also, no. well, the, pres- the question is, how much power do you need to charge a phone? Will it be enough to charge a phone? Five so that's basically it, why no. someone might, well, might to want charge to use it. Well, that's fast charging, yes. But I mean, what is your phone really yeah, going to use? A slow charge. I mean, you probably could get away with like five volts at 100 milliamps. You're probably fine. So this might do it. Yeah, maybe. Or, or maintain charges, maybe a better way. Of well, saying. see, but the thing is that the other thing is if you've got if you've got a two piece bikini, right? Yes. That means that if you want to be able to to, <laughs> I, to I want to get that image out of my. Sorry. My man bikini. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry you for life there, no, bro. No banana hammocks. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but now, now let's say you've got a two piece, so you want to be able to charge of both both parts, right? Yes. Yeah, so now have there have needs a, to be a wire yes. between the top and the bottom. Yes. That's that's just. Well, that can be that that won't be in front. That'll be. No, it should be at the no, back. No, sure, it'll be at the back, but it's still it's a wire. Yeah, it's never going to take off. Look, you we, can we, work we, we thought about design. this too much already. <laughs> cool. Uh, with that, we're going to say thank you very much to Carolina for joining us. Um, it's a pleasure. And thank Twitter you. is at Caroloon. Um, your website is www.caroloon.org. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dominic, is there any other places that people can get hold of you that you want to give? Uh, uh, yeah, the job ad, the deadline is 24th of June, but, you know, the weekend counts as well. Cool. And, um, and it's on nexteinstein.org. Cool. Uh, we'll put all these things into the show notes, and hopefully I'll have them up by tonight. 
so the guys can Brilliant. go to our wiki to get get all the links. Um, and also thank you, Dominic White, for joining us. Um, it's at Singe, website the product. Anything else? Zacon.org.za. Awesome. And, and as usual, uh, thank you, Stuart, Jan from Milan, Karen from Milan, and Johan else for mixing. Uh, and myself to Mark. I hope you guys enjoy your eve the rest of uni. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.